Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see everybody here today. Happy Mother's Day to all of those who it applies to. And for those who aren't yet, well, I'm sure you're a special aunt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day that you've given to us. Thank you for the ways that you have kept us safe this week that we had no clue. Father, thank you for looking after us. As we study your word now, may you open our hearts and our minds and help us to see your truths that are in your word. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Chapter 7, the book of Genesis. So it starts out, The Lord said to Noah, Enter the ark, you and all your household, for you alone I have seen to be righteous before me in this time. Uh, why was Noah righteous? He was believed in God and followed him. He said, raised his family to follow him. Mm -hmm. he, he, it said, remember, that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord back a few chapters. And why did he follow? Because he walked with God. And we also remember somebody else that, had, that was mentioned that walked with God, and his name was? Enoch. Enoch. Okay. Um, it was by faith. As you said earlier, he believed. He took God at his word, and he said, if God says it, then it's, that's got to be it. End of discussion. Nothing else to talk about. It's done. That's Don't good we need more me. people like that today? Yes. <laughs> and you're looking at one. Because mm -hmm. we can all kind of look at things in our lives and go, mm, I could do that better. Oh, yeah. And if we remember, and we'll, we'll study this later, Abraham was counted righteous because of his faith. Uh, Genesis 15, 6, it says, And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Okay? It's belief. It's faith. It's trusting that God will say that when God says, then what he says he will do. Right? Now, sometimes he says, and it's a stretch of faith for us to do it, is it not? I mean, you stop... And you think about some of the things that we've, we've, each and every one of us have ever gone through, and we go, I think I can do this. Well, you're right. You can. You can. But through Him, you can because He gives you the strength to do what He's called you to do. Right? I mean, you stop and think about and I think about both of you, well, actually, all three of y'all, what you had to go through to get your degrees. And those times there had to have been, because I remember going through those times, believe it or not, I'm not that old, <laughs> that it was like, there's no way. There is no way I can do this. But you did. Why? Because you were doing what you were called, you are now doing. He put you in the spot that he wants you, and he gave you the abilities and the strength to get to this point, okay? Never forget that. When it gets challenging, when things are difficult, know that he's there, and he's with you, and he puts you right where you are. You're not there by accident, okay? Y'all are not where you are by accident. God puts you where you are because he's got something for you to do right where you're at. Never forget that. Okay, in Hebrews 11, 7, it says, Noah believed God, it was counted to him for righteousness. By faith, Noah prepared an ark. And that's the reason God saved him. Okay? And if you notice that God tells him to come uh, into the ark in verse 1, that's the same invitation that Jesus gives today to all mankind in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Right? 
And then later on in this chapter, we're going to see that the Lord closed him into that ark. So when they went in, God closed them up. God took care of them. God looked after them. And when the flood was over, it said that God remembered Noah. Okay, it could have been, this is not God's way, but it could have been one of those situations where God closed them up in the ark and it floated around for days and weeks and months and, you know, it settled. And then, you know, three or four years later, God went, oh, yeah, flood. Let me go open that ark. But no. He kept, he, God watched. God cared for. God looked after. Right? They had to trust 100%. I mean, you stop and think. They had to build a device that nobody had ever built. Right? They never needed a boat before. Right? Because there had never been rain. So when he was talking about it's going to rain, they were going, what's rain? I mean... It took a tremendous amount of faith for him to do what he did. Okay? Now, the writer does say God remembers a lot of things about us. But he did make a very good point. He said he does not remember our sins. He puts them behind his back. He puts them as far as the east is from the west. Right? Now, and it's interesting, the story of Noah and the flood, just like the story of creation, has gone all over the face of the earth. Every culture has a, a, a beginning, a Genesis type situation in it, as well as a flood. Every culture. Now, why would that be? If there wasn't some truth in it, right? I mean, stop and think. If if they talk about things came from fill in the blank, okay, and then at some point in time there was a worldwide flood, right, which wiped out, they all have that story in them, okay. So there had to be a legitimate, honest to goodness, something like that to have happened, okay. Otherwise the cultures would have. It would have just been, meh, why would we have it? Okay? Now, a lot of the cultures blame, blame you know, their gods for having these fights and so on and so forth. The Bible tells us that God destroyed or brought that flood about because of man's wickedness. And he's like, okay, i got to start over. We have to start over. It is so bad. I can't, it, it's, it's. There's no way. Okay? We'll move on. It says, You shall take with you of every clean animal by sevens, a male and his female, and of the animals that are not clean, too, a male and his female, also of the birds of the sky by sevens, male and female, to keep offspring alive on the face of all the earth. Now, it seems that uh, years ago there was a uh, theology professor who offered a thousand dollars to anyone who could allow, who could show a contradiction in the Bible. And there were several liberal theologians who testified in a court of law that here was a contradiction because he said two by two in an earlier chapter you'll bring every animal two by two. But then it says here clean animals you'll bring in seven of them. So that's a contradiction. They lost their lawsuit. You know why? Because when you flip over to chapter 8 and they come out of the ark, Noah offered sacrifice. Okay, if he had sacrificed the two, uh oh, you got nothing, right? Again, what's, what's one of God's names? Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide, right? Mm -hmm. He said, You'll bring seven clean animals are the, are the animals that are clean and, and you got to understand when these animals showed up for the ark 
God had already God had already prepared. Okay. Noah didn't have to go out and get them. They they came. They came to him. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? Again, it's one of those things that animals have that sense. You know, this, when the tsunamis hit, it said that the animals went to higher ground hours or you know, way before the actual floods came, right? They have that innate sense. God protects them. Hey, does that sound familiar? God protects. God knows. God saves. Right? So, he brought all those animals, and there they were, at the ark. Okay? And then he says, In yet seven more days I will send rain on the earth, forty days and forty nights, and I will blot out from the face of the land every living thing I have made. And it says, Noah did according to all that the Lord had commanded him. So, stop and think. So, the animals are loaded. Noah and his family go in. And God closes the door. And he waited seven days. Why? Why would he wait seven days? Seven more days. Okay. If you were on the earth at that time, <clears throat> And you'd heard Noah preach for, since from the time he started building that boat till, till he goes aboard it, that a flood is coming, and then all of these animals show up and go onto this boat, and then Noah and his family get on this boat, and the door closes. Uh, come on, people. Something is about to happen. What Noah's saying must be true. God has given them another seven days to repent. Had they knocked on that door, they would have been able to be saved. But nobody wanted to be. They didn't, they were, people were so blind to their sin, they didn't care. one thing that every one of us needs to pray for is that we're never that blind to our sin. Okay? If we if there's ever a oh dear, I made, I, I made a mistake. Thank God that you have that in your mind and in your heart. You know, it's not fun but the day that you don't have that you really need to start being real concerned, right? Because you're 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 going down a path that there's no return. Okay. It says Noah was six hundred years old when the flood of water came upon the earth. Then Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him entered the ark because of the water of the flood, of clean animals and animals that are not clean, and birds and everything that creeps on the ground. They went into the ark to Noah by twos, male and female, as God had commanded Noah. It came about after the seven days the waters of the flood came upon the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the 17th day of the month, on the same day, all the fountains of the great deep burst open, and the floodgates of the sky were opened. The rain fell upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. All right. Underneath the ground... There's obviously water, right? We drill wells, correct? It says the, what's the word specifically? The fountains of the great deep burst open. In other words, there is so much water underneath the crust mm -hmm. of the earth. And in, in, the sky above that there, that it could cover literally cover the earth and we'll see exactly how deep it can cover it 
here in just a few minutes, okay? But it, again, it says all of these things happen. Now, when the first raindrops started falling, do you think people started running up to the water? It's too late, wasn't it? They had an opportunity. They had, they had seven more days that they, they could have. Coulda, shoulda, woulda. But once the judgment started, there was no going back. And you know, there's been times that we've we felt like it rained a long time here, <laughs> right? Well, we even joke sometimes. You know, if it rains several days in a row, you might better go build an ark or you know, Correct. make a joke out of Correct. it. But you know, can you imagine what it would have been like for it to rain forty days and forty nights nonstop? Mm -hmm. And, and probably not the little gentle pitter-patter. No, uh, this was probably like Florence. Mm -hmm. Just a deluge. And for 40 days. And the ground is starting to break apart. Mm -hmm. And water's coming up out of it. To meet all this rain is coming down. I can't imagine what it would have been like for those folks. And they're going, oh no, it's too late. Mm -hmm. He was not joking. We thought he was he was a dummy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Looks like we know who the dummies are now. Mm -hmm. And it's too late. It says, on the very same day, Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth the sons of Noah, Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with him entered the ark. They and every beast after its kind, all the cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth after its kind, and every bird after its kind, all sorts of birds. They went into the ark to Noah by twos of all flesh, in which was the breath of life. Those that entered male and female of all flesh entered as God had commanded him, and the Lord closed it behind him. So it's, you see right there. God closed it, okay? After they entered. They entered. That seven-day period came. And then the bottom fell out. No pun intended. Right? Was it sealed before or after that seven days? It was sealed before. It was sealed. It was sealed so would said, they have allowed anybody to come in after that if it was considered had, sealed? Had anybody come to the door and knocked, wanting in, they would have been allowed in. God would have allowed. But people were so hard-hearted. People were so dead to what God was trying to say and trying to do. They were so oblivious. They didn't care. I was reading something earlier this week and I just I shake I, I I worry about where people what people think because they, they were talking there was something said and they, these people said you know well we have freedom from religion I'm like Ooh, when you stand before him How are you going? How are you going to defend yourself? If you want freedom from religion, just remember. Just remember, that is a path that goes. I'm rejecting God. I'm rejecting Jesus Christ. And we all know what happens when you reject Jesus Christ. Every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the God and the Father, right? And you're saying, <laughs> mm. not a lot of hope. And, it, and you know, you, you so bad would love to just sit down with somebody like that. And I, and I heard an interesting thing, you know, it says that the fool says in his heart there is no God. And I've heard, I heard this week somebody say the thing, well, if, if, when they say fool, they're meaning that you're insane. Okay? 
So it, to say that there is no God means you're either crazy, you know? So what do you do? What do you say to somebody like that? He says, well, there is no God. Okay. Think long and hard before you make that statement. Just say it. says that the flood came upon the earth for 40 days. The water increased and lifted up the ark so it rose above the earth. The water prevailed and increased greatly upon the earth and the ark floated on the surface of the water. The water prevailed more and more upon the earth so that all the high mountains everywhere under the heavens were covered. Think about how deep that would have had to have been. How tall is Mount Everest? Five miles, better than five miles mm -hmm. taller. Right. It was covered. So, five miles deep, there's no chance anybody would have survived outside of that boat. Right? And the mountains might have been higher then because they had they had all these years to erode down and stuff. But mm -hmm. could have been higher then than they are now. It says the water prevailed 15 cubits higher and the mountains were covered. And we, we've we already determined that a cubit was 18 inches, mm -hmm. so it went 22 and a half feet higher. That's a lot of water, folks, that is contained in this earth. And literally, we now know that it is contained, right? Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Now, the question's been asked, what's the scientific and historical evidence for the flood? Um, there was a book written back in 1960 that was called The Genesis Flood, and it was a pretty good work. In fact, the author, the lesson writer says about this being a real, legitimate, no, no doubt this happened type thing. And it said that they answered the uniformitarian argument, and that argument is that existing processing, act, existing processes, excuse me, acting in the same manner as at present are sufficient to account for all geological changes. So, in other words, the way that things are now, it's happened over lots and lots of time, and therefore same processes that have been happening for all this time and they make the changes that we see. Well, if you say that things are as old as science says they are, even then there's certain there's certain things that science can't explain about some of the strata in the rock. Okay? because some of that strata in the rock can only be sediment. And you'd only get that much sediment if you'd have a worldwide flood, right? One of the other things, wait a minute, I'm not gonna go there yet. Give me just a minute. All flesh that moved on the earth perished, birds, cattle, beasts, and every swarming thing that swarms upon the earth and all mankind. Of all that was on the dry land, all in whose nostrils was the breath of the spirit of life, died. Notice it said, all that was on land. What about the fish? They were in their element. Right? They just kept on rolling. They just like, wow, there's more places for us to be. Thus he blotted out every living thing that was upon the face of the land from man to animals to creeping things to birds of the sky and they were blotted out from the earth and only Noah was left together with those that were with him in the ark. Now, there are people who say that this flood was not a worldwide flood, that it was merely uh, happened in the Tigris Euphrates River Valley. Okay. But that 
book that I mentioned, the Genesis Flood, pretty much says no. This was a worldwide catastrophic, cataclysmic type event that happened to the world. End of discussion. And they and there's they they show where you know fossils and things like that, and there, some of the. Uh, like saber-toothed tigers and woolly mammoths and things like that were buried during this time. And they're sort of all in one spot, like they got washed, okay? And th they, there's actually in a little bit later that the lesson writer goes into that in the other chapters. Um, but it's, it's very fascinating. And he also said that during the flood, the earth actually got knocked off of, if you notice, we now have a tilt. You know, it's, we're not straight up and down, mm -hmm. that there's a mm -hmm. tilt to the earth. And he, they say that part of that was because of the flood. Again, you would have probably have to read through and see the where to and why for. But I can see where, when the deep was broken up, when you know, the earth was, that things may have shifted slightly. Okay? Just saying. Now, God had said, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. That was back in Genesis 6.13. Okay? Now, if there wasn't a worldwide flood, got to keep in mind there were already people in North America there were already people in Africa there were people in Europe so on and so forth right I mean they had spread out all over the earth and it said that Noah and his family were the only survivors so either Noah and his family were the only survivors or the Bible was lying right there had to be a worldwide because it said back in chapter 6 the thoughts of man were evil continually in his heart that's, that's, he studied evil that's all he cared about that they had basically lost touch with God they had lost touch with the foundations the things that keep you grounded you know it's, it's the thing of if you don't believe in something then you plant your feet in midair, and we all know you can't plant into midair, correct? It says the water prevailed upon the earth 150 days. In other words, for about five months, the water was on the earth. So, 22 feet, 22 and a half feet above all mountains, 150 days. Why so long? take a while right everything died there, you know there was no plants no animals no bugs and by the way here's one little cute one you know Noah had two mosquitoes on the ark and why did he have them <laughs> it's a joke okay mm. or ticks yeah, I was just going to say ticks there's a lot of things that we're like oh man but but we also have to understand God wanted everything preserved. And he had everything on that boat because he wanted it to be there on the other side of the flood. Right? There was, there's those who take a position that there's no such thing as a great convulsion or catastrophe like the flood. Okay? And we also say in Second Peter 3, 3-4, it says, Knowing that this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Okay, in other words, the scoffer is one of those that says, Well, things have always been like they are, and they'll always continue like they are. He's one of those uniformitarians, right? He says, well, everything that's happening now, that's the way it's always happened. It's the way it'll always happen. 
Mm. Not so much. Okay. Because and and the issue is you can't hold that position and accept the integrity of this book. Okay. This book says there was a worldwide flood. Okay, if you attempt to try to say, well, there wasn't, one of the two of you is wrong. And tell them to read Revelation. It's and not always going to be like it is now. Correct. And that is that is an actual realistic thing. When, when the Holy Spirit is removed, when Christians no longer are on this earth, oh my. It's, it's going to be bad. And we know it is. Anything anybody have to add? We'll see you next week.